I mean, what what more do we have to say about the uh, the guest of honor this evening, ladies and gentlemen? Warm round of applause. Give it up, everybody, for Alan Fu of Glass Tiger. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Matt Pinfield. I wish I had the applause sound effects. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, help, help us welcome into our chat this afternoon, Mr. Scotty Fox. I still got to get sound effects of clapping. I just realized that. Ladies and gentlemen, Fred Stoller. What is this? I've been yeah. very, very lucky. I've met great, great people. I do this show with three <laughs> every Monday, so it's nice. <laughs> to- What's up, gentlemen? How are Sorry, you? I'm late, guy. What are you late with? Honeycomb. Now I get the sound effects going, right? Honeycomb. I love honeycombs. Honeycomb. And then on Saturday, I completely forgot. And then Caps reminded me that uh, Thomas and... Hold on. Um, Sorry, Tom- what? Hold on. What the hell is this? Tom- <laughs> Thomas is dropping his honeycombs everywhere there. What are those honeycombs made out of? Everybody in the chat is yelling honeycomb. 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 Colin Smith, ladies and gentlemen, how are you? I'm very well. My children say, oh, that's the girl that sings with your friend Colin. My friend Rob, who would come to the underground a lot, was a fan of how I did stuff. Christina was always very nice and her organization was always very nice and I was very well taken care of.
Well, well, well. Look at that, Danny boy. Hello, gentlemen. Good evening. Welcome. Great to see you guys. Howdy, howdy. No, no sound effects, Dan. No applause. Nothing. Is the applause not going on? I don't hear nothing. Oh no, really? Uh, oh, I do have the sound applause going on my side. I don't know what's going on. Huh. Well, it's not playing on this side. That's the side that matters. I apologize. I apologize. I'm I am kidding. Hello and welcome, everybody. Happy Monday evening to you. The DJ Staples 93 Roundtable, of course, with our regular panel members, Dan Impressions, DJ, and Mr. Retro Mix Toronto, DJ Thomas Hall. The video we just played was from our guest of honor, the lead singer of that band, Images in Vogue. That song, Call It Love, came out in 1985, was released off their album from 1985 called In the House. Uh, they had a lot of pre-releases, but that was their first actual uh, debut album. It came out in 85, again, in the house. Uh, they also released a studio album called The Spell. I think it was 1988. They've got live albums. They've got a bunch of amazing compilation albums. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome in our guest. I'm already laughing just from our pre-discussion. Let's welcome <laughs> into the room our, our guest of honor, ladies and gentlemen, Lead, oh, there's the applause. There the image is in vogue. Mr. Dale Martindale, everybody. Give it up. There he is. There, we saved the sound effects for Dale. That's what we did. All that matters. How are you, Dale? I'm good. Yourself? I am doing well. It's a pleasure to have you here, and we're all excited to chat with you. What that a, a long video. That is a, good, long video. That's a good song, though. It's very How long. does it... <laughs> I'm falling asleep over here. I'm sorry. Are <laughs> like, they going to play the whole thing? Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to ask you, what's longer, uh, that video or preparing? Yeah, let me do that scene from that video. Oh my gosh. Hey. <laughs> there I am. There I am. Oh, oh. Just like the video. What's but longer, <laughs> that video or preparing your hair for that video? <laughs> I know. I was just looking at it. I was like, someone should have shaped my hair a little better. It's very round on top. Dude, you had the best hair back in the day. I mean, do? you got great hair now. I thought Kevin looked pretty cool. They all look pretty good, but nobody had your hair, my friend. Nobody no, could compete true. with your hair. Do you remember doing that video? Do you remember? like? Yeah, that was in uh, Victoria, BC. Uh -huh. yeah. At uh, this, this little television studio. Because our record company was too cheap to do a real video. <laughs> did you did you like making music videos uh that i like making that one because it would, like took an hour but usually <laughs> really? like lust for love and and uh save it took there's like an all-day affair and then like so careful you're out we were out on that water forever and it's like Oof. yeah it's usually a long drawn-out process that you you know you're wondering why 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 <laughs> yeah I, I i asked because we spoke to uh drew from strange advance um and there's a reason why i'm bringing them up too but uh I, we spoke to drew about making videos and he said the same thing he's like videos were just not his thing yeah Didn't back in the, uh, they're probably a lot more comfortable nowadays i don't know maybe because everything's digital but back then it was like brutal <laughs> i got gotcha, you i got gotcha. you yeah yeah so so you're a good canadian gentleman like the rest of us you were born where vancouver uh chilliwack bc actually yes. Chilliwack BC. Chilliwack. All right. Nice. Actually, my mother had to fly in from a logging camp near Harrison, B.C., because my dad was a logger at the time. Okay. And, uh, yeah, she just went into labor, kind of, and then uh, I was three months premature, so they flew me into Chilliwack Hospital, and, uh, yeah. There you are. Wow. What, was it, what was it like growing up in Chilliwack? Uh, it's, you know, it's a small town. I liked it, you know. There's lakes and all sorts of hiking and the outdoors and things but uh as a kid you know you want to go to the big city you want to go to vancouver yeah it seemed like a big city to me at the time sure and there's a pretty good music yeah. scene when i was like just coming of age you know there's the pointed sticks and doa and all that happening so that was that was fun for a 17 year old well, I was going to I was going to ask you were were your parents into music whatsoever like did they get you into uh, music? No, there was never a lot. Well, my dad liked country and western music. Uh which I thought I hated at the time, but actually I loved it and still love it. <laughs> yeah. That's like uh, old old school country, like, not old, like Yeah, like George Jones, you know, yeah. Hank Williams and all that. Yeah. yeah. Right. And um 
Yeah, Doug, actually, Doug Kershaw, a great violin player, uh, was one of the first concerts that my dad took me to. Okay. <laughs> that was crazy. That's I think awesome. Leonard Skinner backed them up. I'm not sure. It was crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but, you yeah. know. Was there any band or group or, uh, or or individual person that you heard at one point and you were like, yep, I want to do this? Well, I never really thought of being in a band, uh, you know, as far as that goes. So, mm -hmm. no, I mean, I always liked to sing at, like, uh, for some reason, I don't know why, talent shows and stuff when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, just, like for church and stuff you know right right I don't know well, when, why. when did I, you start singing then um like in high school i had a group called the sextet there were six of us and we did acapallo things that, like little shows we did like yesterday and in my room you know by the beach boys and stuff and mm -hmm. yeah. things like that probably just because we like the attention <laughs> we like to sing i guess right. that's <laughs> but, why we do uh, this. i never thought of joining a band or doing it as a job or anything like that you know i was going to art school and I was out at a nightclub one night and Gary just happened to see me there and they needed a singer and they thought that guy looks like he should be in a band. So very that's cool. How that happened. That's nice. <laughs> Did you always have the hair or was the hair? Uh, <laughs> yes, like actually I, there's pictures of me when I was four, I had the same exact hair. I was like, <laughs> I was goth like in 1965. <laughs> yeah. Before it was cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, uh, I, you know, I was 17 in 1978, so I had, you know, feathered, the long feathered hair with the corduroy jeans and, you know, that look. Yeah. And then, uh, and then punk happened, you know, so then my hair got shorter and I was like into the punk scene. And, uh, and then there was the love affair and Duran Duran and that whole look. Oh, so uh, okay. Up, right? But I mean, Images in Vogue was... Uh, from what I remember, too, uh, you know, it was right during the height of all that stuff, right? The Duran yeah. Durans. Yeah. Man, I was know. only, you know, I was at 20. So, yeah, I was young. How? how you, go ahead, Dan. Uh, no, go, go ahead. It's okay. I'll, my, my question actually is, is going to be a little bit later on that I would ask it, too. But go okay. ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say, how, how was it for a 20-year-old being involved in the music business, getting that kind of notoriety? Does it go to your head? Do you take it in stride or are you like, this is the best uh, thing? Yeah, it came, it, it happened pretty fast, you know, like out of nowhere, because like I say, I wasn't looking to get in a band or anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, right from the start, there was like full sold out shows, like right from the start. I was trying, still trying to figure out what to do on a stage and how to sing and, mm -hmm. and below, you know, all that, what to wear, all that, you know? Yeah. And, um, right from the start it's like sold out shows because you know because we're a novelty it's electronic band and there aren't many around for one thing so mm -hmm. you know and it was the yeah. it was the thing at the time so yeah i had to learn pretty fast about things like you know how to work a stage and all that and how to, mm -hmm. all that stuff gotcha but um yeah. as far as going to my head goes uh <laughs> <laughs> well when you're young uh i think yeah i think i don't know i think i always looked at it as uh you know it's a it's kind of a product and uh it's not really me that they're looking at and, and, right. and you know getting all excited about it. it's more of a you know it's the record and this you know the videos and all that stuff you know were, so, were the parents happy that their son said oh mom dad i'm gonna be a rock star well, I know. And I never, never, like I said, I was never looking for that. Uh, I went to art. I was going to art school at the time and that's what they thought I was going to do. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, they came to see me play with Duran Duran at the Pacific Coliseum. That was the only show they ever came to. They thought, you know, <laughs> they thought that was kind of cool, but you know, other than that, they're not. Yeah. Yeah. They thought was, that, I, I think they were kind of. They thought, was, they thought it was kind of neat. I think, yeah. Sure. And that's where I was going to lead <laughs> into you. So you did have, uh, you'd had that that uh, incredible opportunity to work with Duran Duran and to uh, to go on tour with it. I don't know. Were you on tour with Duran Duran? Yeah, or just we were, yeah, we did a little tour. We did like yeah. Seattle, uh, Vancouver, and Calgary. Yeah. And yeah. Um, then they wanted us to go to Reno with us, and because uh, it went really well in Seattle and everything, but we didn't yeah. have the paperwork ready and stuff. So. 
Mm. Like, yeah. yeah, we could have like gone on to LA with them and stuff because we were getting along really well and it was all going good. So, but yeah. And was there a certain point them. in your career where you sit there and say, we started from this as, as teenagers who just went on to, onto a stage and not knowing what to do on stage to a point where all of a sudden you're on there with Duran Duran. Do you remember that yeah. crossover it just point? It very where, natural, where it just, you know, it just, we just rehearsed a lot. So, you know, what you're doing uh, to a certain extent and, uh, you know, this is what it was expected. And uh, I didn't know any better. So I thought, you know, I thought that's what rock bands did. So sure. it yeah. wasn't, it was, it didn't really freak me out in a way that maybe it would have like someone who was like 12 year old with a guitar dreaming one day of being on stage. Right. You know, right. Like, that yeah. wasn't me. Right. That That's not what I was thinking. You know, that wasn't even something that he did. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So now, it just, yeah. So before Images, was were you in a band called Sixty Nine Duster? Is that before? no? That was after, yeah. So it was Duster after was in the nineties. Okay. Yeah, it was in the nineties with Sean Kelly and yeah, some other people. So and, then, how, uh, how did you yeah, we, to we had two two records out and we uh, toured the the Canada like universities and stuff. But oh, it's funny yeah, you say I that. It's a good record, but I don't know. It didn't didn't really catch on at the time. <laughs> It's funny you say that because somebody in our chat had commented that they saw you at York University back in the day. Yeah. Oh, and that was well, we played there with images. Yeah, we played outside with images there. That was a yeah. good concert. I actually remember that one. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, they said that you rocked. Yeah. No, our our concerts were like way different than the album. Like they really did. They really rocked. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't think that they would, but they. Mm -hmm. Like listening to our like the electronic record, but if you came to saw us live, it was totally something else, you know. How long? How long? Did, what? Like how long of a show did you guys typically put on? Like a, a uh, hour, hour and a half. half hour okay. and a half. Yeah, hour. Yeah, depends where you were, but yeah, usually an hour and a half or so. Did you ever have lots any gear? Let the guys, <laughs> like you know, we had six people in the band at one time. Okay. Uh, Is that right? <laughs> six, <laughs> six, seven, eight. You never know. No, five. <laughs> Did you ever have any crazy uh, thing? What's that? And nothing. No. Sorry. What? Oh no, no. I was going to say did, or ask. Did, did you ever have any like crazy stories of shows on the road where something odd happened, or you know, a fan broke into you or something or other? Like any anything notable that you can remember over the years? Do you have any interesting uh, stories? I remember we had a great show. We did two shows. We did one show at Canada's Wonderland, which was crazy, and then. That was in the afternoon. And then we went and did this other crazy show. <laughs> this was when Kevin was still in the band. This country and western bar, I think it was owned by Ronnie Hawkins. It was just like oh wow, all these bikers and stuff. And like I was on the tables and they're all drinking. I'm like on the table singing. And, and, and it was like, <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. It was a crazy show. Yeah, but, I, I uh, heard like, somewhere Usually that... they're just like, you know, family friendly sort of things. But mm -hmm. it was a crazy show. I heard somewhere that you, uh, that, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard somewhere that there was one tour that you were on and you were sick for a while and you would get off the bus, jump on stage, perform anything, and then just have to shoot right back off. Well, I don't know if there was any truth to that or not. What? I didn't hear. It was, it was basically where you were, you were, uh, you weren't doing well. You were, you were sick for one of the, for one of the performances. Oh, of the oh yeah. Well, oh, that was the Roxy fun. Music show. Yeah. Roxy um, Music. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was just really sick before I went on for that show. I was like really sick. <laughs> and that was at the Calgary Saddle Dome Stadium. Yeah, great. But still went on and still did your thing and performed. Show must and go did on. Your, yeah. The show must go on. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Kim Chantness. Got to do the show, oh. man. Got to do the show. Good old Kim Clark. Sure. <laughs> Somebody in our chat is asking if the when your new album is coming out. My Sue personal Stone. album? Sure. That's what I'm working on. Yes. Uh, so hopefully this year. Yes, we're working on it. I've got more than enough songs ready to go. And uh, yeah, I just got to finalize the recording of it. And it's sounding good. I uh, should have sent a couple of tracks along before we did this interview. You can always. Maybe send I will it. after. And you can yeah, yeah. play them or whatever. They've been played on a, like a few little stations here and there. Like the little demos that sound pretty good. Yeah. Actually, and saw something. The Niagara in Station played it, and then down in New York, they played it. But and they're not even like <laughs> we haven't even done the 
any paperwork on it yet. So hopefully no one will rip us off. But. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw your recent post. I saw your recent post on, on, on the Facebook recently. Um, I think you were practicing or rehearsing something or other. That's in, uh, yeah, that's the studio. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're working on. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. You're, yeah. not the, you're not the only one working on something right now. If I understand correct, uh, I heard that your son is also a musician and, and has his own band as well. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye, Honolulu. Um, nice. I just saw them, uh, what was it, a month and a half ago at Lee's Palace. They sold it out. It was fantastic. Awesome. It's crazy. Nice. The crowd was singing along. What's Mule the style Lulu. of music that they do? What is their style of music? What is it? Uh, pop rock, you know, pop rock. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's really, really, it's got some real vintage vibe to it. Like, you know, you can sort of hear the cars in there and the Beatles and stuff. And yeah, it's really good. Yeah, nice. Um, one of the guys in the band is, uh, his, he's, he's the son of, uh, John Switzer who produced one of our songs. So, Oh, wow. really? Okay. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. They're very good. And, um, yeah, they, they, they had a whole tour set up, but you know, COVID and all that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Did, did they ever come to you throughout and say, Hey, like dad, I want some advice of what to do. No, they don't want any advice. I know. I, I, really? I purposely don't tell them anything too much. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I already, <laughs> I brainwashed the kid when he was five and between the ages of five and nine. And you know, that's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all I did. I played with queen and this and that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Gave him a microphone and let him sing along. But other than that, I did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't want to influence him too much. Once he started doing his own thing, you know, like his finding his voice and stuff, I didn't say anything, even though if I didn't agree with it at the time, it ended up turning out into, you know, what his own thing is. But mm -hmm. and I think it's, I think you can get in the way too much sometimes if you're, you know, oh, don't do that or this, do this. Yeah. You know, I think it's better as, to find their as own parents, sort of that's, thing, you know? parents often do that, right? Parents often kind of jump in there and they try and. Yeah, it's a fine line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they, they, they have a way of with the way that they want to do it but that's not how the, the kids want to do yeah. it so let them do it they're gonna find their own way to do it you know that's right that's true yeah does does your son play an instrument or is he vocalist yeah, or is he he's, doing he's much, more, much more musically inclined than i am he plays guitar better than i do he plays the drums and keyboard and can actually record himself properly mm. unlike his old man <laughs> that's got to be a proud parent moment don't know i mean oh i'm very proud of him yeah i was so proud of, uh, of his last show you know. how old how old is your son he's 26 27 <laughs> okay and and what is the name of the band that he's in currently again goodbye honolulu but they're who knows they're taking a break right now so we'll see <laughs> So look, I, I I'm assuming, uh, or or would they be on the Spotify or iTunes or things like oh, yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll definitely check it out. They had so their own little record label for a time called um, Fried Records. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were quite nice. little uh, entrepreneurs. Well, for those That's that good. are watching, check out Goodbye Honolulu. For Gail's sure. Son's yes. band for sure. I'll check them out. Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. And you, you also had, I mean, Images in Vogue also had times where they took a break and everything like that. So uh, how many total members were there from beginning to, to now kind of thing that well, were part of Images Don, in Vogue? <laughs> Don Gordon, Ed Shaw, Tim Welch, uh, Daryl Flint, Gary Smith, Joe Visbury, Visvari, however you want to say it, Kevin mm -hmm. Crompton, <laughs> Derek Giles. We're up to eight. Yeah. yeah. That's all of them, right, honey? You <laughs> should know. Right? <laughs> Just checking for verification. I like that. And of course, yourself is the ninth. Yeah. Most importantly, right. oh, and Glenn Nelson. Most importantly, Glenn Nelson and okay. Joe Fisbury. The two yeah. geniuses behind the music. And I hope it's not a sore subject, but somebody, again, in the chat brought it up that one of the members of Images in Vogue went on to perform another pretty popular group called Skinny Puppy. Yes. Kevin. Kevin, yes. What yeah. led to that? Was was if 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 it's something you don't want to talk about, that's fine. But oh no 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 no, we're still friends. I, I was on his podcast a couple weeks ago. And so Everyone, what led? To that? Everyone's what? always as as it's a, it was all uh, good feelings all the time. Mm -hmm. With that, that's good. And does he come to you and say, "Hey, Dale, you know what? I got an idea for something I want to do on the side." 
Oh yeah, I, I was the first person to hear it when he said, I was like, I got this na- idea for a name, it's called Skitty Puppy. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a good name. <laughs> yeah. I spent many a sleepless night listening to that first demo tape of his, believe me. Yeah, yeah. That's good though. So you, you well, the like- guitar part in, in Dig It, yeah. that's mine. Yeah. Really? yeah. I said to Chris yeah. Shepard, I was like, you got to have this guitar part in there. Oh, it goes, <laughs> and he's like, yeah. you know what? I do. <laughs> Great track. Great song. Yeah. 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 I had him on the, um, I had him on Switchback when, when they just came out. Yeah. Okay. So, so you were host of Switchback there for a while. That was for about a, what, a year, year and a half? 86, yeah. 87. Yes, I love seven, Switchback. Yeah. Loved, loved, loved that show. I <laughs> swear to God, I, I'm not saying it because you're here, Dale. It was a combination of you had John Major doing Toronto Rocks. You had Flipside, which was on Channel 47, Channel 4. It was a good time for, like, you know, yeah. new music on much yeah. music. Yeah. 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 And I was actually you- asked to do an interview on that on new music. I don't know why I didn't do it. Our new album just came out. Denise Donnellan was like, come on, Dale, come and do an interview on new music. I'm like, didn't do it. Chose not to. <laughs> yeah. Didn't do it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, switchback was was ingrained, like I said, with all the popular, you know, you come home from school, show my age, and uh, all the video shows were on TV. And there, it's it great for kids. Like, yeah. there's nothing like that now with the wow. you know, music and people. What was that? It. Was that on CBC? Was that on CBC? Mm-hmm. Right. CB. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That was yeah. CBLT. Good times. Very good times. So what 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 type of podcast? It's even better. Oh, there you go. Well, you know, it's funny speaking of podcasts. So we're doing this thing on Twitch TV. I Tom, listen to a lot of podcasts. Do you? Re- okay. Well, Tom, yeah. Mr. Retro Mix here in the corner does a show every day live at noon Eastern time, just so you know, out of mm-hmm. Toronto. And a lot of uh, the folks that watch him uh, watch this show as well. And his show focuses a lot on it's called Retro Mix. So it's. He does 70s, he does 90s stuff, but he, he primarily focuses on a lot of the 80s stuff. So uh, <clears throat> the Glass Tigers, the Strange Advance, the Images in Vogue, the Chalk Circle, all that kind of stuff like is is pretty much right, Tom's right, wheelhouse. Right. So if you ever get to check him out and you have nothing to do one day at noon, <laughs> check him out. There you go. Retro Mix Toronto. Plug. Hey, hey talk about plugs. Uh, our good friend Thank Susan. Thank God for stations like that. Otherwise, we wouldn't get played. That's oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. We love we love playing our Canadian content on the show. Um, Susan Yang has another question for you. She wants to know if you'll be doing another uh, Bowie show in the near future. I uh, don't. No. no, no. I'm focusing on my own thing. So, no, that was fun. And uh, unfortunately, we only did two shows, and, uh, <laughs> and that was it. Too bad we should have filmed it. That's what we should have done. <laughs> yeah. It was a good show that first one. Mm-hmm. Now you're doing a, a lot show. Of songs yeah. learned for two shows, let me tell you. That's a, that? that's a lot of songs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of lyrics to learn for two shows. <laughs> I can imagine. I can yeah. imagine. How, how long? How long? A lot of boy songs. But how long did it take for you to prep for that? Oh, six months. <laughs> wow! 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 <laughs> Only. Think about it. Yeah. That's a lot of lyrics. <laughs> yeah! 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 yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think like two like, shows. Uh, like Staples, shows. like Staples said, like like only six months, I think, to to learn all those lyrics and everything. Especially if you don't know those those songs already, it's you know that's that's a short period of time one might look at it, you know. So yeah, we should have filmed it. We should have filmed the first one because it was it was really good. It was classic, but and it was at yeah. a really classic rock bar in Hamilton. Mm-hmm. But yeah. we thought we were gonna do more, but then COVID hit. And, oh. Yeah. So oh, yeah, I just like I, it was fun, but just not interested because doing other things now. It's two years ago, you know. It's like yeah, yeah. a weird yeah. time warp, happened, unfortunately. But you guys have a show coming up in May, I believe. Yeah, at Elma Combo, right? yeah, right. Yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there. The beautiful Elma going? Combo. Played there with the, did the Spoons tribute uh, cover song there with the Spoons that night. Okay. Great. Great uh, venue. Yeah. So looking forward to that. So that's going to be you with uh, uh, Strange Adventure. The band, you know, Joe and everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's two great uh, and then, bands in a great uh, loca- location. So it's uh, 
Yeah, it's, I wish I could be there for that. But tickets are actually sold out. Yeah. So yeah, if you wanted to get a ticket, people watching, you're shit out of luck because they're already sold out, both shows. So. I'll, 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 nice I'll, I'll, I'll sell them my VIPs. <laughs> yeah, no way. I, I've been, call I, Susan I, Yang. She's got tickets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, I, I've been waiting 30 years to see uh, both of you together, and I'm not giving up for anything. Yeah, I think the last time we played together was Ontario Place. Yeah, crazy. Actually, so, somebody yeah. mentioned that in the chat before too. That they, they saw you at a Ontario place. Ontario well. place there, yeah. yeah. Very cool. And you mentioned earlier, so when you uh, before you got into music and everything, you were into art. And if I you you still do art paintings and things like that as well. I still do some painting, not as much as I should be, but yes. <laughs> and that, but that's more of a. Um, Personal this point, kind of more of a hobby. <laughs> as a hobby kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, not yeah. doing any shows or anything. Like, yeah. Have you ever thought of, like, have you ever designed your own album covers, anything like that? No. That was all yeah. Stephen Gilmore, mostly. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, maybe I will for my solo thing. Maybe I'll do something for that. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting that you bring up that you do art, because we spoke to Alan Frew of Glass Tiger, he said the exact same thing when he's he not working. Huh? I didn't know he was an artist. Well, nobody. Well, he is now. Yeah, he's. He, is he, he does painting it. and stuff, or what is he? Yeah, doing? He's photography. Doing all, yeah, he's doing all the kinds. <laughs> he's doing needlepoint. He's doing some knitting. He, he does a lot. He does a lot. <laughs> <Making> jewelry. <laughs> some crocheting. Yeah. Crocheting. <laughs> yeah. But no, I find that interesting, and I guess that's because that's part of both of you, right? You're an artist, and so. Obviously, it's not going to limit you to just to one type of art. Uh, yeah, but I, I just Another find it things I'd like to do, but I can't. <laughs> uh, I, hear I wish you. I could write, or you know, yeah. Would you write? Uh, would you write a book? You do what you can. Yeah. Have you thought of that? Like I can't writing, imagine a writing, writing an something. autobiography or something. I can't imagine being able to have the talent to do that. Like that. But you're a talented yeah, guy. Anyway. <laughs> you're a talented. Yeah, there are other guy. talents, I guess, but. Do you have any hidden talents? Having a podcast or writing a book is something I, I, I can't fathom. Hidden, <laughs> Look, hidden yeah. talents? Hidden talents, yeah. I have any hidden talents, honey. Just, I'm a good cook. What yeah. else? Hmm? You should put out a cookbook. <laughs> that, would, that would have been great, actually, if we had Dale Martindale on here um, talking, about, talking about everything and cooking at the same time, cooking up a meal. That would have been fantastic. <laughs> You could have brought this into the kitchen and just do up a meal. That's it. I'm telling you, we need to do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> See, she wants to do it. There I'm go. listening to my wife. I know. Yeah. She Tell says I'm good with the channel. dogs. That's my hidden talent. I'm good yeah. with the dogs. So You're that's like something, I guess. Person. Hey. Right. Tell your wife to come on camera and say hello to everybody. Say hello. Come on. Come and say hello. Yeah. It's only a podcast. It's not yeah, like, it's a, you know, like people are going to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> There, no, nobody's got anywhere to go. We're Should I get into the cooking? How long have you guys been married? No one ever gets to see my wife. I, I'm <laughs> curious about something. Actually, I just heard you say something. You said, "Should I get into the cooking?" What, what, what exactly is that comment about? I keep telling him we should have our own YouTube cooking channel. Yeah, what do you think? Do it up. Sue? Do it up. Just <laughs> start it and, and do Sue. it. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Cooking with Dale and Sue. That's it. Yeah, it'd be fun. Or Sue yeah. and Dale. We can sing together. Yes, yeah, Sue and Dale. Sue yeah. and Dale. Yeah. See. <laughs> How long have you guys been married? Thirteen years. Thirteen years. How'd you oh, mean? I knew it. I knew that. I knew that question. <laughs> the answer, I mean. <laughs> it's just a it habit to check with us. Yeah, that's great. How how did you guys meet? Tell them. Uh, how did we meet? You want to tell the truth? No, we met over the. Uh, <laughs> she emailed me. I was an Images and Vogue fan when I was a teenager. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See that? And you see like, all, all, all of those out there who, who are fans of these artists? Look at this. This is proof right, right here that it yeah. can happen. Proof right it's here. Exclusive, that folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. That's nice. That's awesome. So I don't want to say it this way. Did you did you stalk him and you because you, you no, no it wasn't quite like that, that it wasn't I quite that creepy. Address. No, we didn't we didn't really meet we didn't meet till like years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Did you <That's> stop? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, that sounds creepy. Out this long. 
There you go. She's stalking me. Uh, me. That's why I'm here to ask the weird questions. So, but I actually, I want to ask a question here. I want to go back a little bit. Uh, Images in Vogue, 69 Duster. What what were some of the similarities and some of the differences between the two? Nice one. I sang for both bands. (laughs) <laughs> okay, there's a similar. Yeah. In, terms of the, in, terms in, them. Music, in terms of the songs, there was a, there wasn't a lot of difference between those two bands, to tell you the truth. There was. Um, or was there? Joe did play on on an early little demo of ours, which was sounded pretty cool, actually. But um, yeah, yeah, those bands are quite different. You know, I mean, Six Night Duster was kind of like a guitar '90s more sounding band, although it sounded kind of pop, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I like pop music. What Secretly, you, the show is Barry Manilow. But. Oh, who doesn't yeah, want to be Barry get. Manilow? Yeah. <laughs> who, who doesn't want to be Barry Manilow? I know, right? Yeah. You can rhyme so, off all uh, the skits right now. Yeah. Oh, oh. Shit. I lost it. Oh, what happened? My no, phone. Still oh, hold on. My phone. They're still there. I just press yeah. home. We're still here. You're just frozen now. No, hang on. Yeah, I think his video is just off for a second there. I got gotcha. you. We're still here. Ah, there we go. There we go. We're good. And we're back. And we're not. Boy, you guys do a long podcast. Oh, there we, no, we won't keep you much longer. We're 15 oh, no, it's fine. Yes. No, no, no. I promise. Like 15 minutes and then we'll let I mean, you go. You're an interesting. We're going to let the dogs out pretty soon. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> She's going to stalk me. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. let the dogs out later. The show yeah. answers it all. Who let the dogs out? Now we know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. That's terrible. So real quick, you talk this about is our like, empty room where our son used to live until he moved out on us. See how okay. sad this is? I know. It's so sad. Look That's at this my future. I, I have a 14-year-old daughter. That's my future. One oh, day. This is your future. future. Oh, enjoy it until they leave you. Uh, yeah. there, there's times where I wish they'd leave me now, but I do love them. <laughs> Go getting back to your question. No, not a lot of different, not a lot of similarities between uh six nine duster and images of Vogue. Yeah. Do you have any uh any any comments on six? Did you listen to that album at all, Six Nine Duster? I personally have not. No, 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 okay. no. State Brad, I don't know if you did or Tom. I have not. Six I will. Duster. Is that the? Are you? Is that the it's one? It's not easy did? to get a hold of. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. I, mean, I had you, to order it. <laughs> good luck getting a hold of it. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to send a copy or anything, Dale, just saying. Well, I would if I had one. Oh. <laughs> why, why would you? You only sang on it. Why would you have copies of your own music? What, uh, as far because you talk, you just mentioned that you like pop music. Uh, is there any kind of uh, music today that you're into that you like? Uh, what is it? I listen to a lot of classical kind of like music it. and uh, I listen to a lot of old blues music right now. Okay. Like, yeah, like uh, Johnny Reed. I don't know. Johnny like, Reed, sure. Nice. And uh, what else am I listening to? Did Susan say Def Leppard? Def Leppard. What? I, I think Def Leppard on the radio. All right. <laughs> Never get too much. Wow. Uh, Has there been anybody that you've ever wanted to work with? That you had that you've never had the opportunity, or that you look uh, I would to like to work with work John Punter. We almost worked with him. Okay. He he thought I sounded like the guy that sound that sang for Nazareth. He compared. Mm. He said you're like that guy. He yeah. he. I think he produced a record with them. And how come you never worked with them? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else that you never worked with? <laughs> I didn't work with. <laughs> Anyone else I didn't work with? Well, that you that you wanted to anyway. That I wanted to? Yeah. No, I'm not like I'm not a producer guy. You know, it's not like uh, it's not my field. Gotcha. I got. Gotcha. I mean, sure, yeah. I would have liked to work with. Uh, I don't know, Tony Visconti or something. You know, I mean, like, but no, I never really anyone but Gary Wright. <laughs> Let's put it that way. All right. <laughs> Right. Oh no, I worked with Gary Wright. Yeah, well, that's a shame. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Reel them in, Susan. Reel them in. <laughs> yeah. What do you so so when you get in the car and you're driving around, do you, do you listen to anything in particular? 
I know you talked um, about I used stuff. to listen to the classical music radio station until my wife started like hitting the button and mm. making me listen to Q107 and this other station in Niagara. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> she's got good taste in music. The rock or something. A lot of Aerosmith. Oh, there you go. Staying with the classic rocks, nice. I like the um, I like the bluegrass show on CIUT on Wednesdays. It starts at five o'clock, I think. It's an excellent mm -hmm. show. I recommend that show. Yeah, I like um, what other radio station do I like? I don't listen to a lot of radio. I listen to, like I say, I listen to a lot of podcasts. And yeah, podcasts. My own music streaming. Not wow. me, but other people. Yeah. Well, again, you should check out Retro Mix Toronto every day at noon on Twitch. I will. You should. <laughs> Why are you yeah, shaking your head? Definitely. I Don't think I messaged head. you. I think Dale. One day I sent you. <laughs> I sent you. A, I sent you a Facebook message one day, Dale, as Tom was playing one of your videos, and I sent the link. I don't know if you got a chance to hop in and see it or not, but see, huh. Tom, I got your back, man. I cool. got you. I'll look for it. Well, yeah, we'll send you. We'll send you the link after the show. Cool. If you're, if you're, you can listen to it in your car. You can listen at home. You can listen anywhere. But it's mostly it's mostly '80s new wave. I, I just I'm a big fan of cool. it. And I've always have been. So cool. yeah. So Dale, uh, other than the show in May coming up at the Elma Combo, is there anything else going on you want to plug or promote? Um, nope. Just look forward to the uh, you know new stuff coming out, and um, hopefully I'll be playing with that in is, by the fall i would think is there a, a website that we can yeah. go check you out your stuff no. when it does come out or no we'll just find you on the local uh the, the typical oh, music. maybe put something on facebook if i get around okay. to it right. there you go <laughs> now are you good with accepting people's friendship requests on facebook yeah all right i mean you got a wife out of it and, you, and we're talking they don't to claim to be you know a unicorn or something from yeah. past life <laughs> I'm usually okay. <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> You're here on my show because of it, and you got a wife next to you of 13 years because of it. So I don't know if hey, anybody else is going to. That's a wonderful thing. What can yeah. I say? I don't it know is. if anyone else is going to get that lucky if they friend you on Facebook, but it's good to know, <laughs> that, you, it's good to know yeah. that you're receptive, you're easygoing, nice guy to talk to. We've got an extra room here if anyone wants to move in. <laughs> I'll be there next week. <laughs> <laughs> you you have the chance to rent out the room right now and live with Dale Martindale yeah, for the low low price of only it off tonight. I'm moving in. <laughs> uh, but anyway, listen, I'm gonna let you guys go. I, I somebody wants to know it's what been a slice, so, guys. Dude, seriously, yeah. you were very kind from accepting my messages when you did. Oh, know this was fun. This is a good thing about part. podcasts. You can just ramble along, you know, yeah. and you just like have a conversation with some friends. It's good That's times. Good. We we learned I've a lot. I've enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime. Anytime, yeah. yeah. Anytime, you're more than welcome. Anytime. Very cool. I I will hit you up when I uh, get that new CD up. Oh, that'd be awesome. Is it records yeah. now? The kids are doing whatever they're putting stuff out on. Yeah, That's please, a... please do because when you do, we'll we'll play it on our show. It'll probably be vinyl, actually. Yeah, probably, we can we'll we can play them on our shows. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we can play your music. We'll play your new stuff on our. On Very our shows. cool. I'll send something along. Cool, man. Thank yeah. you, Dale. Right. Thank you, Susan. Nice meeting you, too. Thank you. Say goodbye. Bye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye, everyone. <laughs> where's, the, wait, where's the dog? Right. Right. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. Take care. Take care. All right, right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Dale Martindale of Images in Vogue. That guy's fun. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. All right. So real quick, uh, what I'd like to do... Let's play one more of his videos, and then what I'll do is I'll shut this down, and let's all... Tom, do you have access to the StreamYard? Uh, technically, but uh, what are you looking to do? We're going to end this. Why do we need to... Oh, because of... Uh, you want yeah, to... I'd like to keep the interview separate, Okay. And then, and then we'll come back live. So everybody sit tight. We're going to play a video. We're going to end this stream, but we're going to come right back, so you don't have to go anywhere, right? So let's let's play the full video, and then while I'm doing that, you guys can go and find the other link and watch for the video to end and this end. You know what I'm saying? We got you. All right. Well, thanks again to Dale Martindale for hanging out uh, today. He was easy going, uh, which and I his thought, lovely wife as well. Yes. Yeah, and you guys didn't get to see the dog earlier, but that was cool. We got to see his pet. Yeah. 
I, so, I think uh, I missed that. Yeah, you missed it. It was when we were chatting offline before you came in. All right. All right. So here's another Images in Vogue song called Save It. Uh, this song came out back in, I want to say, 85, I think it was. I'm checking my notes. I should know this off the top of my head. Uh, no. Save, yeah, Save It came out in 1985. <laughs> no, this, my dad said he'd be right back, too. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know who that is. This is keep weird. Waiting, uh, keep waiting by the door. Keep waiting by the door. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. Thank you. 